What's up squad, my name is ESO and welcome back to the channel where we delve deeper into the lore of the Elder Scrolls. If you haven't yet done this quest where you're faced with the option to either kill or spare Cicero, then I suggest checking out the link in the description where I have a walkthrough. But in today's episode we will be discussing the moral implications of killing Cicero from the perspective of somebody who is in the Dark Brotherhood. And before I give you my 5 reasons, I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page here. So I'm going to give you a quick summary. Here we have Cicero, one of the only original surviving members of the Dark Brotherhood outside of Skyrim. Cicero is a keeper, this means that he tends to the Night Mother, and he enjoys it. Oh! Oh, oh yes! <laughs> yes! A little too much. He actually took the Night Mother's corpse from Breville in Cyrodiil when all the sanctuaries were being destroyed. So he saved the Night Mother and brought her all the way to the Dark Brotherhood Sanctuary in Skyrim. But ESO, who is the Night Mother anyway? And what is her significance? Well my friends, the Dark Brotherhood are an organisation of highly trained assassins who fulfil assassination contracts. And to create a contract between yourself and the Dark Brotherhood, you would need to perform the Night Mother's Ritual, also referred to as the Black Sacrament. Sweet mother, sweet mother, send your child unto me, for the sins of the unworthy must be baptized in blood and fear. This ritual informs the Night Mother of your intentions, and who you want to be killed. So the Night Mother is crucial in how the Dark Brotherhood find out about new contracts. Otherwise, they're literally just a group of glorified assassins. So you are the Dragonborn, and as a member of the Dark Brotherhood, when you first interact with the Night Mother, she will actually speak to you. Yes, you. You who shares my iron tomb. And she tells you of a new contract to assassinate the Emperor. And the fact that the Night Mother has spoken to you gives you the highest rank within the Dark Brotherhood, the Listener. So now let's start off with these reasons. So reason 1, Astrid's leadership of the current Dark Brotherhood is incorrect. She decrees that her leadership is comparable and even stronger than the old Dark Brotherhood ways. Indeed she has no respect for your rank of listener and she continues to boss you around for the whole questline until she actually betrays you. Point number 2, the five tenants are the only five rules that guide the Dark Brotherhood, and it's widely accepted that these rules were created by Sithis himself, the father of the Dark Brotherhood, so these words are law. But yet Astrid tells us that these rules are old and they're both restricting and limiting to the Brotherhood, so she basically just ignores them. And in case you had any doubt, Astrid actually goes on to break all five of the Dark Brotherhood tenants during the storyline. She breaks Tenant 1 when she dishonours the Night Mother by her reaction and attitude to having the Night Mother's corpse reside in the Falkreef Sanctuary. She then breaks Tenant 2 and 5 as well when she betrays the Dark Brotherhood and yourself and this directly leads to the death of most of their members. And then she breaks Tenant 3 when she initially disobeys and refuses to carry out the Night Mother's wishes for you to seek out Armand Mortier, who first gives you the quest to assassinate the Emperor. And lastly, she breaks Tenant 4 by having the player steal Cicero's journal to find out where he's been hiding. And she also breaks Tenant 5 again by ordering Cicero's death straight afterwards. This girl just doesn't care, does she? So considering that these tenants were created by Sithis, we can only conclude that Astrid would technically be violating her master's rules by revoking the tenants. Next up we have point number 3, and I already mentioned that Astrid betrays you to the Empire for the sake of agreeing that the rest of the Brotherhood are spared. That man was by far the most insufferable decoy the Emperor has ever employed. I'm glad he's dead, but I'm even happier that you killed him. You, an assassin for the Dark Brotherhood, have just made an attempt on the Emperor's life. It would have succeeded had it been the real man. Surprised? 
So was I when a member of your family came to me with a plan. We worked out a deal, you see. An exchange. I get you, and the Dark Brotherhood gets to continue its existence. But you know what? I've changed my mind. How about this? I kill you, and butcher each and every one of your miserable little friends. Your sanctuary's being put to the sword right now. That's what I think of this deal. You killed my son! All of you! And now you'll pay the price! But even if you don't really care about the Dark Brotherhood's rules and restrictions, even from the perspective of just being friends with Astrid. Can you believe this man? She stabbed you in the back. Like she literally went behind your back and betrayed you. And and my opinion on this is I think the real reason that she betrays you was not just to save the rest of the Dark Brotherhood, but also just to get rid of you. She clearly felt threatened by your authoritative rank of listener and wanted you dead. And this is evidenced in the way she reacts to Cicero when he first shows up in the Sanctuary. She doesn't like her leadership of the Brotherhood being questioned. Overall, from all this evidence, we can conclude that Astrid is just a glorified assassin and she's using the Dark Brotherhood name to charge a higher price for contracts. Next up, we have point number four. I'm actually going to talk to you about Cicero. He's a little bit like Marmite, isn't he? You either love him and you think he's hilarious, or you think he's the most annoying character in the whole of Nern. I mean Skyrim, I forgot about this guy. Anyhow, let's put aside your feelings for just a moment and imagine Cicero is a normal assassin. You should see the look on your face! <laughs> just try. So firstly, Cicero has great respect for your rank of listener. Even up to the point where he's on his own deathbed, in his dialogue, he tells you how you killing him or him trying to kill you is not what the Night Mother would have wanted. And at the final confrontation, when you have the choice to kill him or spare him, he doesn't attack you first. He's just trying to protect himself. Then listen to this. Don't kill me. Let poor Cicero live. I attacked this trumpet bastard. I did. And I'd do it again. Anything for our mother? Return to the Pretender. Tell her I'm dead. Tell her you strangled me with my own intestines. <laughs> but lie. Yes, lie. Lie and let me live. If you actually leave him unharmed, he'll return to your service later on. And this shows great respect for the traditions of the Brotherhood. And he just doesn't have a problem with you. He's like best friends forever. So number five, my final point, is that Cicero is effectively the only real Dark Brotherhood member in the entire game. The others just took on the title and are really nothing more than a group of glorified assassins. Because they have no connection to Sithis or the Night Mother, which is in my opinion essential to being a member of the Dark Brotherhood. So guys, in this video I've presented to you the evidence from the perspective of somebody who knows the entire story. But now, before I go, I'm going to leave you with my favourite passage from The Lord of the Rings, where Gandalf and Bilbo are talking about the creature Gollum. Anyway guys, thank you for watching. If you did enjoy the video and you want to see more, please just subscribe and hit the little bell icon just next to the subscribe button, and then you'll be notified as soon as I put out a new video. But thanks very much for watching guys, my name is ESO, and I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye and have a fantastic day.